Happy Father's Day to everyone in here. If you got your Bibles, open them up to John chapter 16. John chapter 16. I'm going to be reading uh, seven, verse 7 through 11, John chapter 16. We're in week three of our series titled Ghosted. Yeah. All right. Let's try this side over here. We're in week three of our series titled Ghosted. Yeah. All right. We're learning all about the, the presence, the person, and the power of the Holy Spirit. And so John chapter 16, I'll give you some context, but let me read it first. John chapter 16, starting in the seventh verse, it says this, Jesus speaking, But very truly I tell you, it is for your good that I am going away. Unless I go away, the advocate, who's the advocate? The Holy Spirit will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, verse 8, he will prove the world to be in the wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment. About sin because people do not believe in me. About righteousness because I am going to the Father where you can see me no longer. And about judgment because the prince of this world now stands condemned. Someone say amen. Amen. See, Jesus is in the upper room and he's having the last supper with his boys. He's teaching the disciples. This is his last message. This is his last sermon before he goes to the cross. This is Holy Thursday. So this is the Thursday before Jesus goes to the cross on Friday that afternoon. And uh, this is the, the same night where Judas betrays him. This is the same night where he goes to the Garden of, of Gethsemane and, and cries out and prays to the Father. And so Jesus has been teaching his disciples uh, many different things all throughout this chapter leading up to this moment. He's been teaching them about how to use his name in prayer. He's been teaching them uh, about abiding in him. Uh, he is the vine, we are the branches. This is where all that comes from. He's, he's teaching them. He's warning them about future persecution. He's, he's teaching them about the Holy Spirit. It, it's really some of the most powerful chapters in all of the Bible. And I love what Jesus says about the Holy Spirit because he says, when the Holy Spirit comes, listen, the Holy Spirit is going to prove the world wrong about three things, sin, righteousness, and judgment. So when the Holy Spirit comes, right, he's not only going to give us power and he's not only going to give us the ability to to preach and and talk about Jesus, but he says the Holy Spirit's going to prove the world wrong about three things. Number one, sin, Why sin? Because the world's sin is that it refuses to believe in Jesus. Come on, we see this everywhere we go. This is the world that we live in now. This is the world's sin that it refuses to believe in Jesus. So Jesus is teaching them the Holy Spirit is going to come and is going to convict the world about their sin, which is they don't believe in me. They don't believe in Jesus. The Holy Spirit's going to come and remind people, convict people that you can't do this on your own. You can't be your own God. You are a sinner in need of a Savior. You're not enough on your own. But the Holy Spirit's also going to remind them that there's good news, that Jesus died for them to give them new life. So the Holy Spirit's going to prove the world wrong about their sin, which is they don't believe in Jesus. The Holy Spirit's going to convict the world about righteousness. In other words, Jesus is saying, listen, boys, I'm going to go be back with the Father, so you're not going to see me anymore. I'm not going to be here with you. See, because if I'm here with you, if we're face-to-face, then you know we're good. You you know where you stand with me because you can see me. But since I'm going to be back with the Father, you will not see me any longer. The Holy Spirit's going to come and convict you that you're right standing with God, that you're righteous with God. See, because before Jesus in the Old Testament... The priests would have to go make sacrifices on behalf of the people in order to get their sins paid for. And the priests would have to do this year after year after year. And they would run out and the priests would have to do it again. It was, it was just a continuous cycle. So Jesus is teaching the disciples when the Holy Spirit comes, he's going to convict you that you're right standing with God. He's going to convict you that I'm the last sacrifice that needs to be made on your behalf. He's going to convict you that you don't have to make sacrifices anymore. He's going to convict the believer that it is finished. Come on, is anybody thankful for the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross on your behalf? The Holy Spirit's going to come and convict you that you're righteous. He's going to convince you that you don't need to sacrifice again and again and again. Come on, aren't you thankful you don't have to sacrifice? Come on, what Jesus did was enough. And he's going to convict the world about judgment. It says, because the prince of this world now stands condemned. In other words, the Holy Spirit is going to come and convict you, remind you 
convince us that Satan has been defeated. Romans 16, 20 says, the God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. That's good news. Let me remind you this morning, don't be afraid of the devil. Come on, don't live in fear. He has been defeated. Colossians says that God made a mockery of Satan on the cross. Come on, he put him to shame. So the Holy Spirit is going to come, and he's going to remind you that you're righteous. That's good news. Come on, how many of you have ever not felt righteous? How many of you ever felt far from God because of shame and, and guilt and things that you've done? But the Holy Spirit's going to come and convict you and remind you that you're righteous. He's going to remind you that Satan has been defeated. And he's going to remind you, here it is, to believe in Jesus. He's going to remind you to believe in Jesus. I want to preach a message today with this title, if you're taking notes, The Great Reminder. The Great Reminder. I already gave you all my points. The Great Reminder. The Holy Spirit's going to come and he's going to remind us. He's going to convict us. He's going to convince us. See, the Holy Spirit, the, the convicting work of the Holy Spirit will turn your heart towards God. Amen? Amen. You, you don't go to church one day and be like, you know what? I'm just going to go to church. I'm just going to be a better person. You know, I'm just going to be more spiritual. I just, you know, I just feel like being more religious. So I'm just going to say the little prayer at the end of the message. And then, yeah, I'm just going to do that. No, 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 that's not how it works. It don't happen like that. You don't get saved like, yeah, hey, I just want to, I just want to, you know. No, no, no. You get saved when you stand before Almighty God and you go, I can't do this on my own. I, I'm not good enough. I can't give enough. I can't serve enough. I can't sacrifice enough. When you finally submit your life to Christ, when you get the conviction on the, of the Holy Spirit that tells you you're in desperate need of a Savior, when you get to that point, then salvation is possible. It's the convicting work of the Holy Spirit. See, my prayer as your pastor is that you would go from knowing about Jesus, come on, to falling in love with Jesus. My prayer is that you would go from hearing the word, come on, to having the word tucked in your heart. You would go from, man, is worship almost over? Come on, three song, to, man, I can't wait to worship. I can't wait to lift up my hands. Come on, I can't wait to pray. I can't wait to get in his presence. I, I can't wait to just sing of his goodness. I can't wait to just sing of his faithfulness. See, the Holy Spirit will convict you, and the Holy Spirit will change your life, and the Holy Spirit will change your heart. He convinces us to place our faith not in ourselves, but in Jesus. 1 Corinthians 12, 3 says, no one, no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. No one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. That means you can't even get saved without the Holy Spirit. You, you can't even call on the name of Jesus without the Holy Spirit. That's the work of the third person of the Trinity. That's why we pray. That's why we worship, because we're asking God, would you meet us here? We're inviting you into this place so when the word of God is spoken and the Holy Spirit hits your heart, we can cry out, Jesus is Lord. God is good. But that only happens by the convicting work of the Holy Spirit. See, what you couldn't do 30 minutes on the way here, you can do now because the presence of God is here. He can turn your heart. That's called conviction. When you get around other believers and you're like, the Holy Spirit is here. I can feel his presence. It's not the smoke that was going up over the drum set. It's not a vibe. No, no, no. It's the presence of God in this place. And he convicts you to believe in Jesus. The Holy Spirit is here. The Holy Spirit is changing my life. The Holy Spirit is turning my heart. Come on, can you thank God for the conviction of the Holy Spirit? The conviction of the Holy Spirit has saved you from getting into some trouble, has saved you from doing some dumb things. Come on, that's the conviction of the Holy Spirit. See, we all hear from the Holy Spirit. It's just do we listen and do we obey? That's, that's where it gets tricky. I love someone this morning brought uh, Parker a gift. Paul, in case you didn't, there's a, there's a gift back there for Parker. I love the, the, the young lady that came up. She said, God, something told me, the Holy Spirit told me, buy this gift for Parker. And it's the first time I've, I've been obedient. Praise God. Praise God. See, that's the conviction of the Holy Spirit that always points you to Jesus, always points you to righteousness, Always points you to love, always points you to give, always points you to serve. That's the conviction of the Holy Spirit. Now, I don't want you to get confused between conviction and condemnation. Because Romans 8.1 says, therefore, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. 
Condemnation simply means a guilty sentence. Condemnations mean means you're guilty. You did it. You're going, that's condemnation. But see, God does not call the believer guilty. God does not call you guilty for your sin. Once you've given your life to Christ, once you've submitted to Jesus, you make him the Lord of your life, you, are, you, are, you no longer have a guilty sentence. Can you thank God for that? You no longer have a guilty sentence. See, the Holy Spirit will convict you, but the Holy Spirit will never condemn you. See, conviction is from God. Receive it. Condemnation is from Satan. Reject it. Conviction always leads you to repentance. Condemnation always drives you to despair. Conviction inspires you to keep going. Condemnation tells you give up. Have you ever woken up on a Sunday morning? You're like, man, I'm not going to church. It's not for me. Like, I'm just not going to go today. They're talking about, uh, come on, you ever been there before? You can, you can admit it. That's condemnation. You ever been sitting in the message like, eh, it's not for me. It's for my neighbor. This is, eh. <laughs> that's for her. That's condemnation. That's a, that's a lie from the accuser. That's a lie from the enemy. That's a lie. See, see, conviction always says God will help you. Condemnation says there's no hope for you. Conviction from the Holy Spirit always shows you the answer. Condemnation only shows you the problem. Conviction helps you to change. Condemnation says you'll never change. You'll always be an idiot. You'll always be dumb. You'll always make that mistake. You'll always be an addict. You'll always, do, you'll always give in. That's condemnation. Conviction is all about Jesus. Condemnation is all about you. Conviction leads you back to God. Condemnation separates you from God. So when the conviction of the Holy Spirit comes, it's not condemnation. It's not shame. It's not guilt. The conviction of the Holy Spirit is trying to convince you and remind you to believe in and follow Jesus. Come on, we need the conviction of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is coming to remind us that we're sinners. But we're not just sinners. We're saved by grace, so therefore we're righteous. And the devil has been defeated. It's the great reminder. So what did I say the world's sin was? Not believing in Jesus. Not believing in Jesus. A plus for you. Yes. <laughs> Extra room added in heaven. <laughs> the world doesn't believe in Jesus. See, see, what I've learned that when the Holy Spirit convicts you, the Holy Spirit doesn't go, hey, stop smoking, stop drinking, stop cussing, stop going there, stop doing that, stop, stop partying, stop hanging out. That's not what the Holy Spirit does. When the Holy Spirit convicts you, he goes, hey, you know what? You got a, you got a faith problem. You got a belief problem. You don't really believe Jesus. You don't really believe his word. You don't really believe he'll heal you. You don't really believe he'll set you free. You, you don't really believe that he can take you out of this situation and bring you to, you, don't, you got a faith problem. That's the conviction of the Holy Spirit. That's the conviction of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit says you need to turn to Jesus. You need to look to Jesus. In other words, you need to stop trying and start believing. So condemnation says give up. Conviction says look up. See the difference? Condemnation says, man, you got way too many issues. Just quit. Just give up. Conviction says, no, 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 look at the one who has no issues. Look at the one who paid the ultimate price for you. Look at the one who laid his life down for you. And it'll always point you to Jesus. See, the issue with most believers is, is not that you don't have faith. It's just the issue is sometimes we have misplaced faith. Like we got faith in all the wrong stuff. In all the wrong places. I'm reminded of that Garth Brooks song for some reason. I got friends in low place. I don't know. My dad was the only black guy that ever listened to country. So thanks, thanks for those memories, Dad. I don't know if that was the Holy Spirit telling me to say that. Well, probably, probably not. <laughs> so, so the job of the Holy Spirit is to convict us and lead us back to Jesus. Okay? He has one message, and that's Jesus. John 15, 26. When the advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth, who goes out from the Father, he will testify about me. 
So the Holy Spirit's job is to preach, teach, proclaim, and testify all about Jesus. This is the Holy Spirit's message. Turn your life back to Jesus. Turn from sin and turn towards Jesus. When he convicts you, he turns you towards Jesus. He has one message, and it's turn towards Jesus. Get your eyes off your sin. Get your eyes off your problems. Stop being distracted by everything else and turn towards Jesus. Because if you look at Jesus, you'll fall in love with Jesus. If you look at Jesus, you'll become like Jesus. If you look at Jesus, you'll start acting like Jesus. This is the convicting work of the Holy Spirit. 2 Corinthians 3.17 says this. Now the Lord is the Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Verse 18. And we all, with unveiled faces, beholding the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. Verse 18, one more time. And we all, with unveiled faces, meaning there's nothing in the way. With unveiled faces like a bride on her wedding day staring at her man. Hopefully she ain't looking at her side piece in the back. She's just looking at her. Again, not the Holy Spirit. Forgive me, Father. With the unveiled face, we look at Jesus. Okay? No distractions. Nothing in our way. And when we have an unveiled face, what does it say we do? We behold the glory of of the Lord, are being transformed. So when we have an unveiled face, meaning there's no distractions, there's nothing in our way, we're focused on Jesus, we behold the glory, and we're being transformed. So we're with unveiled faces. We behold, and we're being. We behold, and we're being. Or we're beholding, and we're becoming. So as you behold, you become transformed. As you behold, you become You become whatever you behold. So you have to choose. What are you beholding? Because whatever you're beholding, you're becoming. And you don't have a lot of choice over what you're becoming, but you have total control over what you're beholding. And it just so happens, whatever you're beholding, you're becoming. And so most of us today are trying to become something without beholding something. We're trying to become like Jesus without beholding the glory of Jesus. We don't have unveiled faces. We got lenses on and filters on. Come on, we got distraction here and distraction there. Come on, unveiled faces. Behold the glory of God and be transformed into his image, therefore going from glory to glory. And so we want to become successful without doing successful things. We want to become fit without working out. right? We want to we become Right? We want to become everything because we see everyone else is, is this and everyone else is that. And we compare our life to their life. And so we try to take all the shortcuts in the whole entire world to become that without beholding the thing that they did to actually get that. And so it's almost like the word of God has all the answers. But, you know, we try to become something without beholding the word. So, therefore, we're confused. And we just take any old Instagram preacher. any old, But let's just go back to the word of God. And Jesus already spoke it. Have an unveiled face. Behold his glory. And then become like him. And then go from glory to glory. So the Holy Spirit says, look at Jesus. Look at Jesus. And if you look at Jesus, if you behold his glory, you'll be transformed into his image. Amen? Amen. You'll be transformed into his image. 2 Corinthians 3, 18, again. And we all, with unveiled faces, beholding the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord who is the Spirit. The Holy Spirit says, look at Jesus, behold his glory, and become like him. See, the Holy Spirit calls the believer not to try harder, not to do more, but rather focus your faith. Focus your attention. Quit putting your faith in money. Quit putting your faith in your job. Quit putting your faith in your boss. Quit putting your faith in your spouse. Quit quit putting your faith in everything else Put your faith in Jesus. God calls us to be believers, not triers. Believers, not grinders. Come on, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be a better dad this year. It's Father's Day. I'm in church. Come on, look at. 
Look at me. I'm in church, Father. Did, by the way, did you know that Father's Day is supposed to be the lowest attended day of the year in churches? Come on, this is a move. Yeah. Looks full to me. I don't know what that says about guys, but Mother's Day is the third highest after Christmas and Easter. I don't know. But we got some Holy Spirit-filled men of God up in here. Come on, hearts like David after God in Jesus' name. Come on, some fathers in the faith up in God's house. I don't know what everyone else is doing. We're packed up in here in case you're wondering. In case you're, in case you're creeping on YouTube, trying to figure out what we're preaching. Preaching the Holy Spirit. <laughs> The Holy Spirit doesn't call us to be try harders. He calls us to be believers. Because trying harder is all about you. But believing is all about Jesus. Because that's what we do sometimes. We're like, it's Father's Day. I'm going to try hard this time. I'm going to really be in church. I'm going to show up early. I'm going to serve. I'm going to give. I'm going to get baptized. I'm going to pray. I'm really going for it this time. And the Holy Spirit's like, stop trying so hard. And start believing better. Behold the glory of Jesus and you'll become like him. Stop beholding everything else because you're becoming like that. Behold the glory of Jesus. This is the work of the Holy Spirit. Jesus says something so profound in Mark chapter 11. So profound that sometimes it gets overlooked. He says this, Mark chapter 11, verse 22. Have faith in God. That's the answer. And what you going through? I'm dealing with finances. I'm de- Have faith in God. I'm sick in my body. Have faith in God. Come on, our marriage is messed up. Have faith in God. I'm struggling right now. Have faith in God. Have faith in God. Why, why does Jesus have to clarify? Because he could have just had faith. But he says, have faith in God. Because faith without God is futile. Faith without God is pointless. It produces no results. Faith without God is just mindless Words being sent up into the, it's just like, it's, that's not faith. You need faith in God. Faith, so if you don't have faith in God, you find yourself with, with idols, right? Is that what the Bible says? That they were serving idols with eyes that cannot see and ears that cannot hear and mouths that cannot speak and hearts that cannot understand. And therefore, since that's what they're worshiping, they become like that. And since you worship something with no power, you get no results in your life. So instead, have faith in God, not have faith in Mother Nature, not have faith in the universe, not have faith in tarot cards, not have faith in crystals, not have faith in, not have, not have faith in, in any of that stuff. Have faith in God. I, I just like, you got to say that nowadays. Like, have faith in God. Focus your faith on the only one that has power to heal, has power to save, has power to redeem. Come on, has power to save. Have faith in God. And then you might get some results. See, if you ever want to, like, come alive to all this stuff, like, if, if you want to come alive to the word, like, some of you guys are like, man, I read the Bible, it's just, like, boring to me. It's like, bro, no, you're boring. The Bible's not boring. <laughs> like, if you, I'm serious. This is drama in the Bible. If, if you ever want to, like, come alive to all of this and, and come alive to his presence and come alive to his power, if you ever want, like, faith that actually works, real freedom, then you need the conviction of the Holy Spirit to get your eyes off everything else and to focus your eyes on Jesus. So don't just have faith to have faith. Like, don't just come to church because it's a vibe. And there's cute girls. They're all married, bro. <laughs> like, like, don't just come to church to, like, don't, don't just be more religious to be more religious. Don't just do stuff to be better. D- d- no, no. Believe in Jesus. Believe in Jesus. Believe in, have faith in God. See, this is why like, people will come to church. I see this almost every week. It's funny. People will come to church. I'll talk to them afterwards. I'm like, I'm, I'm all in this time. I'm all in Jesus. Me and Jesus. I'm all in. I'm showing up next week. I'm going to serve. I'm, I'm going I'm to lead my family. I'm going to pray. Matter of fact, I'm going to read the whole Bible tonight. <laughs> like I see Greek and Hebrew. You know, I'm praying the spirit, praying, the, like, I'm all in right now. Like, I'm doing it. I'm all in this time. And then by Tuesday, you're like, uh, I, was a, I don't know if I can do this. 
Like, I don't know what I was thinking. It happens every week. And it happens because for an hour on Sunday, you beheld Jesus. And because you beheld Jesus for an hour, your faith grew. And then by Sunday night, you saw beholding Jesus. And your faith fell. And see, the problem, not you because you're here, the problem with most Christians is that we behold Jesus for an hour on Sunday and we don't think about him for six days. And so instead of us going from glory to glory, which is what the Bible says we as Christians should do, we go from inspiration, I'm fired up, to condemnation, I messed up, to rededication. Inspiration, man, God is good. All my life he's been faithful. Condemnation, man, I really screwed that up. Messed that up, I sinned, did that thing again, fell into that rededication. Inspiration, condemnation, rededication. It's called the roller coaster of religion. You ever been on that ride? I'm fired up about Jesus. Father's Day. <clears throat> Messed that up. Condemnation, rededication. And I'll submit this I like roller coasters, they're fun. We went to uh, Legoland in the winter. There's no one there, by the way. It's a little life hack for you. <laughs> Legoland in the winter is a, is a real vibe. Because um, there's like, you go on the biggest roller coaster there, and it's like the smallest roller coaster at Magic Mountain, but it's cool. <laughs> and so we go on the roller coaster. There's no one there. So you go around once, pull back up. You look, there's no one in line. They're like, you want to go again? I look at the boys. It's like, let's go again. So you do that like four or five times. And at the end, you're like, no. Nah, Get me off this roller coaster. <laughs> because it's not fun no more. Like the, the things you were once laughing at that was fun the first couple times, it's no longer fun. Now you feel sick. Right? Now you don't like the shaking. Now you don't like the, the dropping of your stomach. Now you don't like the noise. Now, now it's annoying. Now you want to get off. See, that's how the roller coaster of religion is. It was fun the first time. Now I'm fired up. Walk away, come back. That's, that's how Father's Day, I'm, hey, I'm here, Father's Day, and we don't see you till fall. It's like it's summer, dude. I got, you know, then fall comes, it's like, oh, I'm falling back in love with Jesus. Then we don't see you till Thanksgiving. Then I'm thankful for Jesus. You know? Then we don't see you till Christmas. You're like, baby Jesus, I got to come for baby Jesus. <laughs> right? Up and down, up and, and then we don't see you till Easter. You're like, Jesus is back, I'm back. <laughs> you know, it's like this. It's just like this roller coaster of religion that we go through. But I, the question, are, are you tired of the roller coaster? Are you, are you tired of going up and down? See, I, I'm not calling you to be some spiritual superstar where you're going to go from, like, whoever you are today to the Apostle Paul tomorrow. Like, that's, that's not the call of the believer. That's not what we're, we're not, we're not trying to get some crazy growth, some, like, no, 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 that's, that's not what the Holy Spirit calls you to do. The Holy Spirit's call is that you would go from glory to glory, from strength to strength, from faith to faith. And so you look back over your life, you look back over the, the last year, and you go, man, I don't even recognize that guy anymore. I don't even know who that guy was. What was I thinking? Look, look, how, look how faithful God's been in my life. Look how good he's been. That, that's the call of the believer. To, to look back in two years and five years and go, man, I used to do that. I used to say that. I used to act that way. No, you, you've been going from glory to glory to glory. Why? Because you've been beholding Jesus and he's been transforming you and you didn't even know it. But look at you with your arms folded, listening to a preacher that's way younger than you in church on Father's Day. Look how good God's been to you. Just convicted all the dads. But you won't even recognize the goodness of God in your life, but it's because you've been beholding his presence and God's been transforming you into his image. See, that's the call. That's the convicting work of the Holy Spirit on your life. And so some of us live with so much shame, re regret, guilt, condemnation because we, we mess up, we turn away, we sin, but the Holy Spirit convicts you and he says, turn back to Jesus. Turn back to Jesus. Turn yes, you're a sinner, but also you're righteous. You're righteous. Satan has been defeated. Isn't that the great reminder that we're talking about today? The Holy Spirit says, look at Jesus. See, here's what I've learned. 
Nothing that I say up here will help you. This message, it's not going to change your life. What will change your life is you holding on to the word of God and applying it to your life Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Because it's easy to be a Christian up in here. Everyone, like, it's, God is good. Some people grew up in church. God is good. And all the time. Yeah, try that at the mall. That don't work. You know, try that at school. That don't work. It's easy to be a Christian in here. But it's not about, th- this is like your espresso shot for the week. This is like your go out and take on the world. Go out and fight your battles. Go out and face your Goliath. Go out and be filled with the Spirit of God. Go out and, and pr- go out and proclaim. This is what this is. This is the gathering. This is the ecclesia. This is where we, we come together and we testify of God's goodness and we sing and we praise. And then we go out and we have to face whatever giant is in our way. See, it's what you behold, not Sunday morning, but Monday night. And Tuesday night and Saturday morning, that's, that's how you become transformed by what you behold throughout the rest of the week. So the constant struggle that we have is, is we don't put our trust in Jesus. We put our trust in everything else. Put our trust in our money, our faith, our work, our boss, our spouse, everything else. But the Holy Spirit is convicting us, saying, have trust in God. Have faith in Jesus. Turn from whatever you're doing and turn back to Jesus. Worship team, come join me. Turn towards Jesus. That's the message. That's the great reminder. That's it. Fathers, I kept it short for you. I tried. It's the great reminder. It's the convicting work of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit's going to come, and he's going to prove the world to be wrong about three things. Your sin, your righteous. And judgment. It's going to convict us that we're all sinners in need of a Savior. That we all fall short of the glory of God. That without Christ, we can do nothing. That at, in the garden, we were separated. We were far from God. But God, from that moment, made a plan to get back in relationship with his kids. And he sent his son, Jesus, to die for us. And so the Holy Spirit's going to convict us that we cannot be our own God. We cannot work our way towards God. We cannot give our way towards God. We cannot serve our way to God. We cannot scratch, fight, claw to God. we got to surrender. We're not enough. It's the convicting work of the Holy Spirit saying, you can't do it. You need Jesus, who became the bridge between you and the Father, who closed the chasm, who came to give you new life, who came to live a perfect life, show you what an example of living a righteous life looks like, and died on the cross, was buried in the grave, and three days later was risen from that grave, defeating death, hell, and sin on your behalf. The Holy Spirit's convicting many of us right now. Can't do it on your own, you're a sinner. The Holy Spirit's convicting the believer, you're a sinner. Believe in Jesus. The Holy Spirit's convicting you, hey, you're righteous. I know you've been walking through some things. I know you've been going through some things. I know you've been struggling. I know you've been falling back into to temptation. I know, I know you've been hurting. I know you've been, but you're righteous. Start believing the word of God. You're the righteousness of Christ. Come on, you, you're, you're righteous for what the heart of a person believes resulting in righteousness. Come on, the work of the righteous will be peace. He made him who knew no sin to become sin on our behalf so that we might be the righteousness of God. You're righteous. Come on, this is a word for some of you right now. Come on, quit walking in shame, quit walking in condemnation and start believing it. God is good. God is faithful. The Holy Spirit's convicting us that the enemy has been defeated. Come on, this is good news. The enemy has been defeated. That you don't gotta live in fear anymore. You gotta live scared anymore, but you got power living on the inside of you. Come on, the same power that raised Jesus from the dead is living on the inside of you. If we would just believe it, that's the issue. But thank God for the Holy Spirit and the great reminder that as we walk out this door full of faith, we're reminded, man, I got power living on the inside of me. 
I got Holy Spirit, faith-filled power. Come on, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Isn't that what the Apostle Paul said? I'm, if I got money, I'm good. If I'm poor, I'm good. If I got people all around me, I'm good. If I'm by myself, I'm good. Because I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. It's not that, it's not, come on, that's not, we, we don't use that verse like that. We use it like, man, I could, I could be in the NFL. I could jump over this building. I could do all things. No, that's not what that means. It's about contentment. It's about being good because you're in the presence of God. So I, I, could, I, could worship, I could worship with all of you. I could worship in my room by myself. I could do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Why? Because I got a good God. I got a faithful God. Amen? Come on, this is a move. You're standing in the mir- middle of a miracle. And God got you here right now. I don't, know, I don't know what got you here this morning. I don't know if it was an invite. I don't know if, if your wife dragged you here. I don't know if they... You, they told you you're going to brunch and you turned into church. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know how it all happened, but you're here. And you're here for a reason. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you're here with us. And God's speaking something to you right now. Quit trying to do it on your own. Quit trying to be your own God. Quit trying to build in your own strength, lead in your own strength. Submit to the Holy Spirit. Life is so much better when you don't have to be your own God. When you let the Holy Spirit lead you, when you let the Holy Spirit guide you, when you finally just surrender everything to Him, that's the convicting work. Come on, is the Holy Spirit convicting? He's convicting me right now. Quit trying to lead in your own strength. Quit trying to lead in your own wisdom. Let the Holy Spirit lead you and see where He'll take you because He wants to transform you from one image of glory to another from glory to glory, from strength to strength, from faith to faith. So don't feel like next week you gotta be up here preaching. Don't feel like next week you gotta be up. No, 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 wherever you're at, glory to glory. Glory, to, come on, if that's, if that's you going from not ever praying to God, I'm praying in Jesus' name. That's glory to glory. If it's, God, I have no faith in you to God, I got a little bit of faith in you. That's glory to glory. Come on, he wants to take you from glory to glory, strength to strength. Quit, quit, quit worrying about what's coming next. Quit worrying about what you went through because God is here right now. And God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He doesn't change. So he's here with you right now. His word is true. We believe it. If it's in it, if it's in it, his word, and he said it, he'll do it, and it's for you. The Holy Spirit is for you. Healing is for you. Blessing is for you. Receive it. Believe it. I pray the Holy Spirit's convicting you right now to build your faith, to turn towards Jesus, to stop turning towards everything else and turn towards Jesus. The great reminder. Holy Spirit, thank you for reminding us today. Let's pray. Lord.